today for an interview about being an author. Thank you for having me. Question one. On your webpage, it states that you are not just an author. What other kind of work have you done throughout your career? So I'm also a graphic designer. So all the book covers you see and how books have um, certain headings and chapters, those are done by graphic designers. So I do that for other authors. Um, I also teach writing to classes and I teach at conferences and I drive a school bus. <laughs> like a regular full-size school bus. Wow. So long. <laughs> I drove this morning. Ooh. Okay. Question two. Do you work in an office or from home? I work from home. So behind me is my office. I share it with my son, which is why there's a giant teddy bear. So my son has one side of the room. It's just this giant open room on the third floor of our house. He's a huge Fortnite fan. Mm. And he has an entire arsenal of Nerf guns. So his side of the room over there, um, he puts on his headphones when he's playing video games and stuff. He's at school right now. And uh, I can sit here and work or do graphic art. I have, like, the big tablet where you can actually draw on it. It's like a computer. Oh, and I can do the artwork. Okay. Question three. Is your, fa where is your favorite place to write? Ooh. Uh, I write in a lot of different places, but I like to write at coffee shops. I write here in my office a lot. Um, I have a bunch of author friends that write at coffee shops, so we have something called Writers Around the Block, and we set the day and time, and we say, we'll be at Starbucks, or we'll be at Panera, and you'll just show up, and there'll be like 10 other authors there just writing together. So, just about everywhere I can get my hands on it. I think the weirdest place I ever wrote was in Disney World. <laughs> Were you inspired by things that were going on in Disney World? Disney World's great. Uh, there's a whole Disney series now about um, these kids that go in after dark and the rides come to life. Oh, that's and cool. did you hear about those? They're so good. Oh, I heard um, about those. Disney World itself is a great storytelling place, and I believe before you can be a writer, you have to be a good storyteller. So I constantly am listening to people, and they give me great ideas. And Disney is one of them. Okay. Question five. Wait, four. <laughs> is there an author that you admire the most, past or present? Yes. So when I was your age, I hated to read. Couldn't stand it. There was nothing good for me to read back in the day because they didn't have books like they have nowadays. They had, um, they didn't have much YA, and I'm a YA novelist. So my friend used to read Stephen King. And I used to read Michael Crichton, who I liked. He wrote Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. um, but nowadays, I, I read a lot to learn a lot. So right now, I actually, before you called me, I was reading Alexan Alexander Christos' oh. To Kill a Kingdom. And it's a retelling of Ariel, and she's, like, really mean. But it's super good. Um, I love Sarah Mast for her high fantasy I love Leah Bardugo, who writes Shadow and Bone for the way she builds worlds. So this is the third floor, and if you see those railings back there, below that is a room that's my whole library, floor-to-ceiling bookshelves. I'm a huge book collector. So I, I would say if I had to uh, favor someone, I would probably say that I favor Leah Bardugo mm -hmm. for her ability to write. Okay. Are there any books by the author that our students in like, what we have two different schools, there's lower school and upper school, our school is K through eight. Are there yep. any, are there any books that our students could possibly look into from her? Oh yes, Leah Bardugo is a national multi-time bestseller. She writes Shadow and Bone about a young girl who is the sun summoner and a boy who is the darkling. And it's in a fantasy version of Russia. They're very, they would be appropriate. They're dark, but they're appropriate for a high level reader. Gotcha. We'll look into those for sure. Question six. Wait. Oh. You're fine. Question five. Do you prefer brainstorming your thoughts with a paper and pencil or on a computer? Nah, I actually tend to brainstorm when I drive the school bus. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I miss a stop or two. Um, I tend to get my best ideas when I'm doing something boring. 
So mm-hmm. going for a walk, vacuuming. It's because when you do something that your body knows how to do without you really thinking, your creative side of your mind comes forward. Um, sometimes I'll sketch down notes in my phone or on a piece of paper, or um, I'll even just voice, like make a voice note somewhere, and I'll go from there. I have a thousand stories in my head. I never, I never have a problem coming up with different crazy ideas. Okay, question six. What kind of education and skills do you need to be an author? That one's a great question. So, believe it or not, most of the best sellers have no background in writing and an educational standpoint. They're just really good storytellers. So, I went to um, an all-women's college, and I was a forensic psychology major. I didn't even like to write. But I was really good about daydreaming. Are you a good daydreamer? Mm, Sometimes. You sometimes. So when I was a kid your age and I would ride in the car, I would look at the woods that go by and pretend I could see dragons running through the woods constantly. I was a really good daydreamer. So when it comes to education part, you actually just have to read a lot. That's how I learned the craft, is to read constantly and make notes about how people set up a fight scene or how they write pretty and um so reading constantly and a lot and uh being a good storyteller and then you kind of learn how to do it from there that's awesome okay question seven what is the most enjoyable part about your job what i'm doing right now Hmm. (laughs) i like seeing my readers I, so, like, I have a lot of fans. I write this book. Well, I write a whole series, but this is one of them. It's Undertow. So it's urban fantasy. Kids on the Cape and people that act like they steal your soul like a shark. But I get fan stuff like this. Mm-hmm. That's a bracelet that's in the shape of a shark's mouth. How cool See? is that? And then um, people draw stuff for me. And I have a lady that has a bunch of tattoos based on my series. There's clothing based on my series. So the whole reason for most people writing is so that we please people like you. That we make you kind of just want to read. Okay, well, you have fun answering uh, 16 questions. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I got this. <laughs> Question eight. What is the jo- genre of the books you enjoy writing the most? I love writing urban fantasy. Do you have any idea what that is? Urban fantasy. I know fantasy, but not urban fantasy. Urban fantasy means it's here and now, but with a twist. So, like, it could be in your high school, but one of your classmates happens to be a fairy and nobody knows about it. Mm-hmm. That's urban fantasy. High fantasy, the trees talk and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's totally in a different world. That's like dragons, you know? You go down to the dragon stable and you get your dragon, you go fly mm-hmm. for an ice cream. Kind That's high like, fantasy. Kind of like when Harry Potter... I have, uh, Harry that. Potter's called magical realism, believe it or not. It's not considered fantasy. I know, weird, right? So there's like hundreds and hundreds of different genres. They're very specific. I'm trying to think of an urban fantasy you would know. Oh, um, Lightning Thief. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson. So Percy Jackson's supposed to take place here and now in the school for these god kids. You know, he goes to an amusement park and gets attacked by some dude with a fiery head. I haven't read them, but that's that's considered urban fantasy. Or Mrs. Peregrine's Home for for Peculiar Children. Tongue twister. That's considered urban fantasy. I've never read a Percy Jackson book, so I've only read, I mean, watched Percy Jackson. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. Yep, that's what I write. Okay. Number, wait, question, question nine. What kind of obstacles have you faced as an author? I think every author faces doubt. So we can be writing something and we think it's good, but then we look at it for the 27th time and think it's junk. So I think the obstacle is doubt and the obstacle is time because I'm a mom and I'm a bus driver and I'm a graphic artist. So finding time to write is hard. So, 
The Undertow series is 620,000 words that I wrote in four and a half years. That's a lot of words. <laughs> That's a lot of words. Absolutely. Question 10. What are the tools that you rely on to perform your job? Ah, I love, um, well, I used to write just like with your, you probably have like Microsoft Word. Do you ever type up like something for class? Mm -hmm. So I use the same stuff, but I also use something called Scrivener. And it's this writing software that allows me to save scenes and stuff. But my absolute must have is my music. Because I write with music blasting in my ears. So mm -hmm. I have Spotify and iTunes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We're in the computer lab right now. It's very nice. There's something glowy in the background. Is that a smart board? Yeah, well, it's our projector. Yes, ma'am. Ah, my, my son has one of those. We didn't have those when I was a kid. We just banged the erasers. <laughs> they were chalk. Believe it or not, we're actually, all of our classrooms at our school, we're actually about to get what they're called interactive panels. So it's, a, it's a giant 75-inch TV with a computer built in that you can touch. That's awesome. Yeah, you sure. guys are going to like that. Just remember, it's not a whiteboard, so don't use the pen on it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Question 11. What kind of technology do you use? Uh, right now, I'm talking to you on a 27-inch Mac desktop, so I mainly use Macs mm -hmm. um, because they're, this one has a huge processor in it because when you're doing graphic art, and there's, so when people do, all right, so I see Undertow's cover. Mm -hmm. Undertow's cover is built in layers. So there was like 20 layers of art before it, and then I collapse all the art down at once. So to do that, you need a big, big computer. Otherwise, your other computer will just cry and then burn up. <laughs> you can't handle it. So, true. so that, this is um, something I use for my Skype visits like you. Um, it allows me to talk. I have a Yeti mic that's really cool. Stuff like that. Mainly it's just the computer, though. I uh, play on the PS4, and I have a cousin that actually sometimes plays with me, but I need a head headphones to... Do you have a turtle beach headset? Is that what they're called? For PS4? Or a different one? It's I a green? I actually don't know what they're called. My daughter has a PS4, and it has Darth Vader on the side. And she likes to play Overwatch. Oh. Overwatch! Yeah, and she's 18. So, I know when she's playing because she yells at people online. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question 12. Have the kind of tools and technology that you use changed throughout your career? Yes. So, when I went to college, I had a typewriter. Like the old type, where you had oh. to like white it out if you made a mistake. Um, I think my industry is way different than when I was a kid because now you can have a Kindle and you can read books digitally but um, I still prefer a print book like this is this is that Alexander Christos because if I read a book like this I remember where I've seen a scene and I can go back to that page but if I'm reading on a Kindle I can't remember like because it's just sweeping by so yeah it's, it's different from where I started mm -hmm. okay Question 13. What is the m accomplishment as an author that you are most proud of? Wow, that is a good question. Um, I had a lot of success as an author, which was something I didn't think I'd ever have. So I won Barnes and Nobles, Craziest Submarine, and, and a lot of different awards for Undertow, but I think I guess the biggest thing that has an impact on me, I don't know if it's a proud thing, is that someone once said that my books changed her life because she was in a very bad place and it made her see light again. So that was huge for me. Um, fans, I love, I love all the crazy stuff I get from fans and all the stuff they do. And There's fan fiction based on my books online now. So I actually read about my characters doing other stuff that I didn't plan because these people wrote about them. It was great. Um, 14. Question 14. If I want to become an author when I am an adult, 
what school subjects are the most important for me to excel on? And Literature, so reading. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like basketball, okay? So do you, play, do you play a sport at all? Yes. What do you play? I play a lot of soccer, and when I was in first grade, I used to play more basketball. Okay, so you know in soccer how you're constantly um, training and going to practice and stuff? Mm -hmm. What would you say to a kid that came up to you and said, I've never even held a soccer ball, but I'm going to play in the World Cup? Mm. Would you be like, dude, you can't play. you got to do a lot of training, right? Mm -hmm. Your training as a writer, as an author, is reading. That's your training. So people that come to me for me to do their covers and stuff, sometimes they'll say, so what do you like to read? And they'll say, oh, I don't really like to read. And I'm like, well, that's not good because the book probably is not that good to be written. you got to oh. read a ton. Mm -hmm. I'm reading Tim Plus books. Oh, those are good. My son loves um, Last Kids on Earth, the zombie books. Mm -hmm. I'm on uh, book four of Tim Plus isn't, isn't there like 30 books in that? No, there's five. Oh, really? Okay, I'm thinking of a different one then. I'm thinking of a different one. There's another quest one that I've seen. Okay, question 15, almost the last question. What is your prediction about the future for authors in the next 15 to 20 years? I think we'll probably see fewer publishing houses. So there used to be a lot of publishing houses. The bigger ones have bought up the smaller ones. So one publishing house is like a city, and within that city there's a bunch of little towns and blocks. Those are the smaller publishing houses. So I think as self-publishing side gets even better and better and better, they are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, I still think print books will be just as big as they are now. Believe it or not, print books still outsell Kindle books. I've never read those books before. Yeah, you know it's kind of boring to read a Kindle book. You know what the, the tablet, you know, you load the book and you just swipe. That's a Kindle book. Oh, yeah, book. That's a that, uh, yeah, my yeah. grandmother. Who Sorry, was. iPad. I, I don't have a Kindle. I have an iPad that I read on. But my, people still prefer print books. My grandmother does that on her phone. Yeah, it hurts your eyes after a while. I've tried to do it, but then my eyeballs burn out. <laughs> Okay, question 16. Is there any advice that you would give to our students that will help them if they want to become a successful author like you one day? Yes, be a big reader and a big daydreamer and start writing down your daydreams. Because I don't write from the first page to the last page. I write in scenes and sometimes I write backwards. Wow. So. There was a, a woman named Agatha Christie, and she always wrote backwards. And Gone with the Wind was written backwards. So I go to the end of the book, and I know where I wanted to go, and then I kind of back up, and then I put it all together. Mm. I'm doing that on one of my games. One of it's my easier that way, because you know why? Movies are shot in scenes. So you know how if you think, do you have a favorite movie? Yes. What's your favorite movie? Mm, probably... Um, Harry Potter. Okay, so one of the Harry Potters, which was based on books. So I bet you can think of scenes in Harry Potter that you really liked. Is there a scene in Harry Potter that you remember really good and you liked? No, I don't remember that much of it. Oh my gosh. So I remember in Harry Potter that the kids are trying to plant mandrakes. Do you remember the mandrakes that scream whenever they're pulled out of their pot? No. Okay, so... The idea is that if you write in those scenes, you write a lot more a lot faster than trying to write from the first page to the last. Because if you're a writer and go, I want this scene where these weird little plants get pulled out of pots and scream, that's what you write on a day you want to write it. And then you write something else another day, and then you put the book together at the end, like a puzzle. Hmm. It's... You got any other questions for me? No. Well, I had so much fun chatting with you. You had great questions. Did you know you have better questions than some adults ask me? Mm, no, I don't know any adults that ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, but you did a really good job. Thank you so much for having me. It was great chatting. What are you talking about, Well, thank you for joining us. 
Anytime.